Hello there guys, I'm Unstable Voltage and welcome to episode 5 of my Europa Universalis tutorial series with the Common Sense DLC. In the last video, which was quite lengthy, we spoke about how you can make money in EU4. And this is just going to be a short video just to round all that off with how you can save money, which can be very important, especially if you are at war. But even in times of peace, you might find that you end up in a situation where you're actually making negative ducats per month and you need to go ahead and do something about that. Now the way the game works is you do have the ability to take out loans and loans last for five years and if you actually mouse over taking a loan here it will tell you how much you will get from the loan and how many loans you can have at any one time. It also tells you what the interest rate is and it tells you that it will increase the inflation by taking a loan. So you can have multiple loans at any one time if you ever go um, down into negative treasury, it will automatically take a loan out for you at the beginning of the month to bring you back up to a positive treasury. Um, when the loans are due, you get the option to pay them back. If you can't afford to pay them back, you can reissue the loan, assuming you have enough spare loans that you can take out. If you get to a point where you're actually in minus figures and you have taken out the maximum number of loans, you will go bankrupt and that will be game over. If you take out a lot of loans, you will get monthly interest, which does go down over time, so you will have to pay the monthly interest back. So remember, if, like in the current situation, I'm losing um, 1.79 ducats per month, if I took a loan out, I'd be losing more than 1.79 ducats per month because I'd be paying the interest on the loan. But you don't actually pay the loan itself back until the five years are due. Also, when you get inflation, inflation increases the cost of buying anything, such as training new troops and building buildings. You can reduce the cost of inflation by spending um, diplomatic points to bring the inflation down. Uh, sorry, admin points to bring the inflation down. So you can actually reduce inflation. You will also find that there are certain advisors who also have the ability to reduce inflation. We don't have one at the moment, but you can get that. Also, if you're playing a Catholic nation and you are part of the papacy, you uh, if you save up enough papal influence, there is an option in here somewhere to actually reduce um, that there. Forgive, uh, forgive usury. So you can actually reduce the interest per annum by one if you have uh, 25 papal influence to spend. While we're on this screen, another good way of making a little bit of extra money if you have the papal influence is if you, if you save up 100 papal influence, you can gain one mercantilism, which will actually help you with your trade, give you a little bit of extra money there. So why are we losing money? What do we need to do? What do we need to have a look at? Well, the first thing you might want to do if you are losing money is go ahead and have a look at your advisors. Now, advisors are normally definitely worth having because they give you additional monarch points each month and they will also give you a certain modifier. So like this guy, for example, gives me 10% uh, production efficiency. But if you're really, really short of money, you might want to get rid of these guys. I could kick this guy and getting rid of him would save me the one gold uh, or the one ducat per month that I'm spending on him. Bear in mind though, if I then decided I wanted to rehire him, I can't get another level 1, but if I wanted to rehire someone who was level 1, it would probably cost me another 16 ducats just to rehire them. So unless I'm, going to keep, unless I'm going to get rid of him and keep him gone for 16 months, then it's probably not worth it. Plus, that 10% production efficiency may well be giving me um, the extra 1 ducat per month back. But if you're really, really struggling, you definitely might want to consider firing some of your advisors to save a little bit of money there. It's also worth noting that having certain advisors, as well as actually giving you the monarch points and the modifiers, certain advisors also open some of these national decisions. So some of these national decisions require you to have a specific type of um, counsellor. So for example, this one, the Advancement of Religion Act requires a theologian. So if we actually had a theologian advisor and we don't actually have one because it's a dip it's a diplomatic advisor but if we had a theologian then we would get the option to pass the advancement of religion act so it is worth checking these things because sometimes getting a, getting a specific advisor will give you will give you the option to get one of these specifically 
So what else should you do to avoid losing money? Well, first of all, as I said in the last video, make sure if you have any light ships that they are protecting trade. So I'm playing as France here. France only start with three light ships, but they're not actually doing anything at the moment. So let's instantly go ahead and go and get them to protect trade in... Um, well, we can have a look down here and see where we would get the most money. So if we just have a look, if we sent them to Bordeaux, that would increase our trade value from 1.65 to 3.61. That's the biggest increase out of all of them. So let's go ahead and send that ship off to protect trade. Now we can tell that it's protecting trade because if we look on the outliner now, we can actually see this little icon on the left-hand side of the number of ships, which is showing us that it is going and protecting trade. So what else can you do? Well... One of the first things you should do is actually have a look at the state of your armies. That's normally the biggest outgoing cost you have. If you go in and have a look at the economy tab, which is number three, and you can see where all of your money is going out up here. So we're spending um, 1.01 ducats on advisors. Uh, we're spending five ducats on fort maintenance. And we're spending 11.85 on army maintenance and 1.42 on fleet maintenance. Now, our fleet isn't all that big. We don't have many ships starting off as France. But apart from the lights, we also start with these ships here. We've got four transports and we've got two heavies. Well, the first thing we, do, we need to ask ourselves is do we really need to use these at the moment? We're not at war. We're not transporting any troops around because everything's happening on the main, uh, mainland. We don't really need to use our heavies again because we're not at war. So what can we do with these ships? Well, you've got a couple of options. The first thing you could do is disband them. You can get rid of them completely. Now that's fine, but remember, if you suddenly decide you need ships, it's going to take you time to rebuild them, and it's going to cost you to rebuild them. So one option you have is you can click this button here, which is mothball. If you mothball a fleet, it will reduce the amount of money that you pay to maintain them. You will still pay some money, but not nearly as much. But all of their health will go down to 25%. And if you mothball a fleet and then suddenly decide you need it, you can go ahead and unmothball it. it, doesn't cost you anything, but they will still be at 25% health and you'll have to leave them in port for a few months to get fully repaired back up to 100. But it's a good way to reduce the maintenance on the ships you're not using whilst keeping the rest of your ships at full maintenance. You do have the option to come into this panel and actually reduce fleet maintenance. You could just go and reduce the amount of money you spend on ships. But that will reduce their overall morale and it will also reduce the effectiveness of your um, light ships. Which means they won't get as much trade power if you've got them protecting trade. So reducing the morale of your navies is not something that people usually do. And the mothball option was only really added in the Art of War expansion, but it's a really, really good way of doing things. Just go in, select any navy that you're not using, and go ahead and hit the mothball button. That'll save you some money. Uh, another option that you do have as well is um, you can go to someone close by. There has to, it has to be someone near where your ships are. So let's say we go to Castile. And if we go into their diplomacy and down to economy act uh, actions, there's an option to sell ships. And we can actually try... You, it, it will only allow you to sell a navy at once. So if you want to sell less ships, say I just want to sell the heavies or I just want to sell one heavy. Uh, if that was the case, I'd have to go and split that, um, split that fleet up. But I could offer to try and sell these ships to somebody else. And as you can see, trying to sell that navy, um, Castile wouldn't actually take them. And it will tell me why normally if you mouse over. Or at least it used to tell you why. Sometimes it's because they don't have enough uh, force limit. Sometimes it's because they don't have enough money. Sometimes it's just because they've got no use for the ships. Uh, but it used to tell you the reason why. And it seems that that has now disappeared. But you can try and sell your ships as opposed to disbanding them. So if you decide you want to get rid of them, you might want to try and sell them first before you disband them. The second thing to consider is mercenaries. Do you have any mercenaries? Mercenaries are great, especially at a time of war. They don't cost you any manpower, but they're incredibly expensive to hire, they're very expensive to maintain, and they're even more expensive to reinforce. If any of your armies have suffered casualties, they reinforce every month. Now, if they're your own standing armies, they still cost you money, but they reinforce from your uh, manpower pool. If they're mercenaries, they don't cost any manpower, but they cost a huge amount of money. But even just having them standing around means they're costing you quite a bit. So the first thing you should look at is, do you need mercenaries? In my opinion, there's only two times when you really should have mercenaries. If you're at war and you need the mercenaries to bolster your numbers, 
Or, if you're at peace, but you don't have much manpower and you've got a small army, maybe you want the mercenaries just to uh, boost your numbers up to make sure that somebody doesn't attack you. Well, I'm not currently at war, I'm at peace, and I've got quite a big standing army. If I go ahead and have a look at the economy, I can tell if I've got any mercenaries by mousing over the army maintenance tab, and it shows me my armies, and it actually says my mercenaries. And it also says I'm over the force limit, which is something that I will uh, cover shortly. So I'm actually spending money on mercenaries. Now, you might have mercenaries as a separate army, or they might be mixed in with your army. And the easy way to tell if you have any mercenaries in an army is click on the army and look at this button here. This is the uh, the top right-hand button. It looks like a little, uh, little mercenary with an arrow pointing to the left. And if you mouse over this one, because the button is not lit, it says there are no mercenaries in this army to detach. But if I go over here and click on this army, the button is lit. And you can see it says here, all mercenaries from this unit will be detached and form a separate unit. So if you actually look at the army down here and scroll up and down on the list, you'll see that two of the regiments here are green. And these green regiments represent the mercenaries. Now there's a couple of different ways you can separate them and you can manage them, like splitting the army and doing it manually. But we'll talk about that in another video when we actually cover dealing with armies. The easiest way for now to separate the mercenaries is click that button. And what that will do, it'll kick them out. And you can now see the army size here is 6 because the mercenaries aren't in this regiment. If I, oh, sorry, the regiments aren't in this army. If I go ahead and click on the stack again, it will switch to the uh, two regiment army, which is just the mercenaries. And we can go ahead and disband them straight away. So now we've got rid of our mercenaries. We're already making positive money. That's how much money we were losing just having the mercenaries. We're now actually making a profit. But you can see it still says I'm over my force limit. And I'm not paying an awful lot of money, it's only half a ducat, but we're still paying out extra money. So one thing it's worth noting is go ahead and click on your production interface and bring up the uh, build and land units panel. Uh, you can also do that if you hit the V key by default. And have a look down here at your army force limit. You can also find this number if you actually go into your um, diplomacy panels and bring up the military tab, which is shortcut key zero. And that will actually show you here what your uh, army force limit is and what your naval force limit is. We're below our naval force limit, that's fine, but this applies to your army force force limit and your naval force limit. Now your force limit is the maximum number of troops or the maximum number of ships that you can have. Now it's not a hard cap, you can go over that number, but if you go over that number it will dramatically increase the amount of money that you have to spend each month and it increases exponentially. So going one over my force limit might only cost me an extra 0.55 ducats per month, but if I actually go um, to 34 it would probably be a lot more than that. Now, it tells you where you're getting your force limit from, from 20 provinces and the fact that we're an independent nation. Force limit is increased through various things, such as... Um let me just bring up a province view. Uh, force limit is increased through various things, such as the province um, development in total. So as you can see there, you've got land force limit 1.20. So your total sort of provincial development increases your force limit. It can also be reduced by things like local autonomy as well, because local autonomy will bring the force limit down. Uh, two things that can often lead you to being over your force limit. Um, the most common way is if you actually have a vassal and you integrate them into your country. Because if you have a vassal, so let's say we vassalized Provence here. Provence have an army of nine. If I then, well actually they have an army of 11 because they've got another two guys up here. So if I had Provence as a vassal and they've got their own 11 regiments of army, that's fine. Now when I eventually integrate Provence, it might only increase my land force limit by maybe six. Because I'd get the force limit provincial score but I wouldn't get their base score so I would inherit their 11 regiments but I'd only get an extra six um uh, six regiments to my force limit which would instantly put me over so be very very careful when you're integrating vassals because you will often find that when you inherit their army you go over your force limit so I'm over my force limit by one so I just want to get rid of one guy to bring me down to my force limit so I'm going to select this 27 stack and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Create New Unit button here, the two little green arrows pointing in both directions. And I'm going to go down the list and just pick one unit that I want to get rid of. So let's go ahead and get rid of one of the infantry. I'm going to click the little right arrow next to it and it will move it to uh, the other window. I'm going to select this unit and I now have an army selected with one regiment. And I'm going to go ahead and disband that unit. 
So now that I've done that, if we go back into our treasury screen, uh, we can see here that if we mouse over it, we are no longer over our force limit and we're saving ourselves another half ducat a month. Now, another thing that you can do with your armies is you can actually reduce their maintenance. So one important thing is armies all have this little green bar here on the left hand side when you have them selected, which is their morale. And you can see for this army, the morale is currently 2.59 out of a maximum of 2.59. They are at their maximum morale. Morale is very, very important for fighting. And you can also see that morale as the little horizontal, uh, sorry, little vertical green bar on the right hand side of their flag. So what you can actually do if you want to save a little bit of money, because we're paying 8.75 ducats per month army maintenance, we could go ahead and slide that down. And you can see already we've gone from making 1.87 a month to making, let's say, 5 a month. So let's go ahead and do that and see the effect. You can already see that our morale has turned yellow on the troops flags and also if we actually select the army we can see here our morale is currently 2.59 because it's still maxed out of a maximum of 0 0.67 so our morale is actually now a lot lower so if we just unpause the game which i have done now and we just allow these to tick so it will stay at the uh, 2.59 until the end of the month let's just go ahead and just speed things up and just bring the game up to the end of the month so we can show the effects of this so now, if we actually look, our morale is at 0 0.67. Now, it might look like it's still full because the bars still show that they are at the maximum amount. They are, but it's the maximum morale that's reduced. Now, if we were to suddenly go to war and these armies got involved in a fight, they would get absolutely crushed because they have next to no morale. It also reduces their effectiveness at suppressing unrest because having friendly troops in a province reduce unrest as you can see in this province there isn't any unrest but friendly troops are giving it a minus 1.69 to the unrest so let's go in and increase the maintenance let's just say we've gone to war we put that maintenance back up and you can now see that our maximum has increased but we are still sat at that 0 0.67 out of 2.59 so our morale is nowhere near maximum and again if we just have another look at what we're doing here for provincial unrest Minus 1.69 for friendly troops. And now we've got some morale. It's gone up to minus 5. And we're still not even at full morale. If we let another month pass. There's another month gone by. And we're still at minus 5. Because it's the, there's a maximum number of 20 troops. Uh, so minus 5 is the maximum uh, unrest you can get. But as you can see. Each month our morale is going back up. So reducing the morale of your armies. Is a very very valid tactic when you're. Um, not at war but just bear in mind if you think somebody's likely to attack you keep your armies well away from the borders because what you want to be able to do is turn the maintenance back up and if you go to war and you have low maintenance you will get an alert you will get a pop-up that says that you're at war and your armies are on reduced maintenance to remind you to pop it up however you don't get that warning if you get any rebels appear so do be careful if you're trying to suppress rebels try and keep the maintenance up if you can afford to do so so those are the basic ways to save money one last thing which was added in common sense is the way that forts work because you now pay maintenance for forts so anywhere where you have a fort of any particular level now it doesn't count if you don't actually have a fort in your capital and you just have the um the sort of free garrison level uh, but we do actually have a castle in our capital in this instance you pay one ducat per month for your forts and again you can see that if we look at the econ uh, economy panel uh, that we are paying five ducats per month for fort maintenance because we have five forts now if you go ahead and disable a fort let's go ahead and disable this put this fort in burn for example if we go ahead and untick this button here on the province view we can mothball the fort and it will now only cost us 0 0.5 ducats per month. Now, the effect of turning a fort off means that the fort is essentially not there. It's not going to be doing anything. It's going to act like it doesn't exist. But if we go back and actually look at our fort maintenance now, we're only paying 4 ducats 50. If you want a quick way of being able to mothball and unmothball all of your forts at once, go into the military panel, which is 0, and you have these buttons down here that allow you to mothball all forts, or activate all forts as you can see now in the economy panel we've instantly gone down from 5 to 2.5 so we've halved the amount of money that we were paying on maintenance so just those little steps that I've taken and bear in mind I didn't even fire the advisor but just taking those little steps getting rid of a couple of mercenaries getting rid of one unit and um, 
just mothballing my thoughts, has taken my economy from minus 1.79 ducats to plus 4.42 ducats per month. So those are just little things you need to watch for if you are losing money. Um, one final thing is avoid putting your troops anywhere where they're going to get attrition. So always select an army and mouse over the different provinces and have a look what the supply limit is and the army weight. So as you can see, Poitou here has a supply limit of 33 and the army weight is only 26. We're under the supply limit. That's fine. Obviously, this is a tiny little army. Berry has a supply limit of 22. That is fine as well. But if we were to go ahead and put all of that army into a single province, and again, let's just speed time up so we can do that. We're going to put the entire army in Berry, which doesn't have enough supply limit to um, hold them all. You'll now see that this little skull has appeared next to them. So now that this skull has appeared here, it means that the army is actually taking attrition. The land can't support them. And what's going to happen now is each month, this army is actually going to lose men. And as you can see here, we don't really need uh, many men to reinforce because it reinforces quite quickly. But what will happen is at the end of every month, you'll see a little negative tick. We didn't get one that month, but because we take attrition here, we're losing men. Now, it's not on a very big scale here because of the way that I've done it, but if we were losing a lot more men, we would be reinforcing them every month and that would be costing us a lot of money. So try and make sure you don't have your armies standing anywhere where they're getting attrition unnecessarily. Split your armies up, move them into provinces, move them into coastal territories where the supply limit is higher. If you're ever sure what the unsure what the supply limit is, remember you can open the map modes button, uh, the map modes, and there is a supply limit icon which I'm going to lose. There it is. It's the little um, sort of sack with the upwards red arrow. If you click on that map mode, you can see where your supply limit is highest by the lighter green colours, and the lowest is the the sort of orange and red colours. And if you select an army. The colours will change to show you where it's safe to stand and where it isn't safe to stand. So avoid taking an attrition. You also take attrition in enemy territory until it is occupied. So bear in mind if you are at war, you want to keep away from enemy territory unless you need to be in it. One final thing that you can also do, especially if you're at war, is go into the military tab and uh, sorry not the military tab it is the economy tab and you have the option to spend some points to raise war taxes which basically just means that you're you don't pay as much money for your troops um but re uh, bear in mind you can only do that if you're at war and it does cost you some um monarch points as well but those are the basic ways to try and save money so you know how now know how to make money and you now know how to save money so when we come back on the next video we're actually going to talk about how we uh, make claims against our neighbours so that we can get ready to go to war with them and we'll talk a little bit more about building up our armies as well. So thanks a lot for watching guys, I hope you're still finding these videos useful. I'll see you on the next video. Until then, goodbye for now.